So this is part two in a series of uh, staying one step ahead of your behind. Get uh, colon cancer screening. <clears throat> now that sounds simple, but uh, making the choice about getting the screen is not so simple. I actually was reminded to get into this topic by uh, USA Today, 531, 1980, uh, 1980 tw to 2018. Um, <clears throat> an article in USA Today was reporting on a press release from the American Cancer Society saying, um, maybe we should drop the cancer screening age from 50 to 45. The vast majority of uh, cancers occur in people 55 and older, but the ACS was making the point that, look, we've got the cancer rate since 1996 in people under age 50 has more than doubled. And it, again, it's probably due to the increase in uh, obesity and uh, uh, diabetes. So <clears throat> the others haven't done that, the CDC and the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, so there's still debate over that. Um, but again, those are some of the simple parts. Uh, the, the more difficult parts gets into making the choice on which one to actually do. And at the end of the video, I'm going to actually go into the, the meat of this topic, and that is looking at all the different options, uh, FIT, FOBT. Actually, this doesn't cover um, the DNA test, even though it was made in 2014 by the company uh, Exact Sciences that actually uh, markets the DNA test. And what's the DNA test? Oh, again, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's also called Cologuard. I'm actually going to do another video which goes into the detail on FIT, fecal immunochemical testing, versus Cologuard, which is, again, the DNA testing. But there's some key differences between the, the big options here. I didn't even get into... Uh, uh, the uh, CT colonoscopy, uh, the flex sig, and the and the routine colonoscopy. So again, we're going to get into some more detail on that in just a minute. <clears throat> but before we do, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F O R D Brewer, B R E W E R. Started off as an ER doc. Um, the experience in the ER will really get you focused on uh, prevention. So I went to Hopkins and uh, got some training in prevention. Uh, went on to run the program uh, there, uh, and for the past three decades have been running large programs with pre uh, primary care and prevention, um, <clears throat> and I'm back at it again. I've, I've uh, had my own preven prevention practice. We're slowing down a little bit on that, but not, uh, not completely. Uh, we're focusing a little bit more on, um, with PrevMed on, uh, uh, Bredesen type evaluation uh, and screening and prevention for um, cognitive decline. But I'm mostly focused right now on helping a company train their 500 primary care docs on prevention. Here's the, the, the basics on uh, making the choice around colonoscopy or, or uh, colon cancer screening. Most folks are waiting for this, rectal bleeding, change in uh, bowel habits, uh, blood in your stool. And the bottom line is those are all signs of cancer. That's way too late. We've got, what? what is it, 50, yeah, over 50,000 deaths. I'll cover that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> so don't wait for this, these problems. Go ahead and do this. Get a colonoscopy. Uh, one of the take-home methods, um, the DNA method, FOBT or FIT. FOBT is fecal occult blood testing, and the FIT is the fe uh, fecal immunochemical uh, test, or virtual colonoscopy. And again, we'll get a little bit deeper into those details, but I've got to cover some of the key why. Why do we want to do this? covered that earlier. It's the number two cause of uh, cancer. 28 million uh, cancers um, each year due to this. 
51,000, I think I said, I don't know if I said million, but it's 51,000 deaths each year in Americans alone from colon cancer. Over 30,000 of those deaths could be prevented if people just kept up their screening. But the majority of people don't get, are not up to date on their colon cancer screening. <clears throat> so what are the basics in terms of the process? Are you 50 or older? And now, as we saw in the last article, in the last video, if you're going to follow the American Cancer Society, it would be, are you 45 or older? No, well then, uh, learn about it, educate others. Yes, have you been uh, screened? Uh, yes, well then, good for you. Again, uh, tell others, get the word out. No, you haven't, then you need to know about your screening options. Do you know about them? Uh, okay, then take, make your choice. If you don't know about them, then start learning about them. And that's what uh, this video is. It's on that, that section. Learning about the options, which include, again, colonoscopy. Used to include sigmoid, but we'll talk a, a little bit about that um, in a minute. The take-up home options, that's where it gets really confusing. And then the uh, virtual colonoscopy. Now, to get started on the question about choosing the right test, do you have major risk factors, in other words, a family history, or have you got your uh, own uh, history of your, um, inflammatory bowel disease? If so, then just go straight to the colonoscopy. And uh, again, you can, you can talk with your doc about whether it needs to be age 50 or or younger. If you don't have those two problems, the family history or the personal history of inflammatory bowel diseases, then you've got other choices and let's start learning about those. And again, that's what this video is about. Uh, <coughs> to stop, <coughs> another way in terms of images to help you get these options in your head, um, one is the endoscopy. Uh, used to do some flex sigmoid. Um, that was basically just looking at this area. The colonoscopy gets the entire area of the colon. That's why we've leaned more and focused more on the complete colonoscopy over the past uh, decade. There's a, you can get a scan. It's a virtual colonoscopy. And now there's several different home methods where you take a, your own stool sample um, and get that tested. Now, <clears throat> in the previous video, I shared my own experience with uh, full colonoscopy. Um, again, a lot of uh, folks like, like stories, and I don't mean to discourage people from getting colonoscopy, but uh, my, my friend, Nathan Math Massey, was the... Uh, 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 the GI doc, and he said, Ford, I bet you'd like to wake up during the procedure and see what's going on, wouldn't you? Uh, we did that, and it again, that was not pleasant. Uh, <clears throat> but that's not the reason why so many people are not getting their colonoscopy. This is the reason. They have to take off a day of work and drink literally gallons of liquid to clean that feces out of the colon so the doc can see what's going on. <clears throat> now, here, here's, the, um, here's some of the basic comparison points on the different types of screening um, for colonoscopy. As I just mentioned, the definitive screen is, uh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't listening to myself the different uh, options for colon cancer screening. Now, regarding colonoscopy, we've already mentioned that is the definitive test, but there are a whole lot of reasons why people are not getting uh, full-blown colonoscopy. So there are a whole lot of reasons why the technology has been focused on easier take-home tests. This uh, Let's go backwards up here in terms of uh, colon cancer screening methods and choices. This is the full-blown colonoscopy. We talked about, um, well, this is done in the operating room. 
there's uh, three days of prep, uh, lots of liquids. Uh, this is Flex Sig uh, Sigmoid. Again, we're not doing that because we're, you miss the whole um, first half of the colon with those. I, I guess there are some people that are doing those somewhere, but again, uh, not that I'm aware of. You can do those in the doctor's office instead of having to go to the uh, um, to the OR, uh, and you don't have to put the patient under to do that or, or uh, uh, sleep the patient. The CT colonoscopy again is um, something where you have to go through the uh, the cleansing as well. So. In many ways, it's uh, not that much of an advantage over colonoscopy. These are the ones that we're going to focus on over the, this, the rest of this video and the next video. Uh, fecal occult blood testing, which has been around, gosh, it's been around since I went to medical school. I uh, graduated in 81, so that was, uh, it's been around a long time. They've done a FIT, fecal immunochemical test, and again, a DNA test. And we'll get a little bit deeper into those um, in the next video. But in, all, in these, you collect a sample at home in your bathroom. You don't have to, uh, to go through uh, as many uh, prep issues, and you certainly don't have to go into the OR for this. What's the difference between the uh, fetal... Uh, fecal immunochemical and the fecal occult blood testing. It's right here. It's um, with the fecal occult blood testing, uh, you have to watch certain foods. For example, you can't take um, an iron pill um, that will react with the uh, hemocult testing chemical. Now, with the immunochemical uh, testing, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to change uh, your diet or medications. So that's the difference between those two. And again, as I mentioned, uh, there's also now a DNA test made available by Exact Sciences. There's been some debate, a significant amount of debate back and forth uh, about FIT versus uh, Cologuard or Exact Sciences, and I'll cover that in the next video. Thank you for your interest.